Don't f***ing speak while I'm doing the intro. What's that relationship like now? With David? With David? Yeah. Are you um, still cool or talking or? Yeah, I don't know. We're, we're cool. Of course. But this is where I made a mistake. I forgot that the biggest fucking idiot I know was driving it. Oh, oh shit. Oh, shit. And then I would just like to do something a little bit to get my balls back. Like just fucking jump out of a plane or do something that I'm scared of. Welcome back to the video. The origins of today's story brings us to Staten Island, New York. This is where Jeff was born and grew up. He was raised in a happy home with both parents and a good support system. When Jeff was still young, his mom happened to be in one of the twin towers that the unspeakable 9-11 attacks took place. His mom thankfully survived. From there, Jeff began thinking how fragile life can be and began a rebellious period. I grew up in Staten Island, New York. Happy birthday, Jeffrey. When I was a kid, I thought I was gonna be a baseball player, but that didn't work out. I'm back, baby. Uh, go fuck yourself. Get the fuck out of here, man. New York fucking driving. Hey, Mom. Yeah. Are you home? Yes. I came to New York. You did? I'll be home in uh, five minutes. My mother was a secretary. She worked in the World Trade Center. She survived 9-11. She was a tough Italian woman. My mother, she actually cares for me, and she loves me, and she misses me, and that's why I'm surprising them. I'm gonna pop up and just be like, hey, Ma, I'm home. Whole year. Oh, yes, it has been too long. Where's the old man? In the shower, he doesn't know oh, you're yeah. coming. Can you stay for dinner? Yeah. <laughs> there he is. We were just talking about you. Come over here and show the stupid tattoo. Let's compare them. You want to see my tattoo? Yeah. Look. Well, Jeff and his friends he got mixed up with at this time sold drugs on the streets. He credits them for developing a sense of humor, but he thinks that they're responsible for the bad things he did as a teen. It's literally the fucking dump of New York City. It's where they put all the trash. So I think that definitely had something to do with making everybody so trashy and just horrible people. If anybody from Staten Island's listening, love you guys, but we were all dealt a shitty hand. Let's be honest here, you know? There's just some funny people there, man. I think I owe a lot to them with like developing my sense of humor and just, I don't know, sh just the ways we used to fuck around and the dumb shit we used to do. Growing up, Jeff got a job in a barber shop honing his skills and continuing to grow his quick-witted and dry sense of humor while working there. At his peak, he was making $1,500 a week from cutting hair. He eventually moved to Miami where he said he had met bigger criminals. You know, 15, 16, start making some money. I had the um, clientele, which was good. I was working every day, working hard. I would get home from work, shot, you know, like ready to knock out. And I, I started taking some trips down to Miami. Miami was like the place that everybody in New York was on vacation. It's a two hour, two hour flight. While you were in high school? No, now I was like 17, 18. I worked for a couple of years at this barber shop. Okay. And now I started taking trips down to Miami every month or two. And I just fell in love with it. And I, I saw this barber shop that was in construction right underneath my hotel on South Beach. And, um, as I'm walking by, I'm like, I'm looking at these haircuts, the pictures of it, and celebrities and athletes, like, all on their promo, like, on the windows before they revealed, like, the shop. And I'm just so impressed, and I'm, like, telling my friends, like, check this place out. Like, look at how sick this is. And the owner of the shop walks out. They were in there at, at the moment. Just, like, freak thing. I see the guy. I'm like, is this your place? Like, I'm a barber in New York. Like, I, I would love to come down here. I'm looking to move down here. And the guy was like, okay, yeah, we'll give you a shot, like, if you want to come down. So I followed up. I, I went home and I was like, fuck this place. You know, New York is like miserable in it the sucks. winter. Yeah. Staten Island, there's no opportunity. You're not going to get to meet anybody ever. Now I see this barber shop where like athletes and celebrities are just willingly walking in. And I was like, I got to jump on this opportunity. So I did. And I was a little nervous at first because I had a good thing going for me in Staten Island. I had a good clientele. I was making decent money. I was making more money than my parents at the time. And did they know that? Yeah. I was also selling a little weed too. So... Was making a weed as well. It, every barber sells a little weed. Okay. Especially, but that probably gave you like a, a, a huge amount of confidence to be a kid in Staten Island making more money than their parents before you're 21. Like that's that gives you a different outlook on life. Yeah, 
Yeah. But Were you smoking weed? No, I never liked weed. Now I, I, I subbed it out for the booze because sometimes you need a little a little disconnect. And caught hairs for celebrities like Mac Miller. Jeff started building a career as an internet personality from the defunct app Vine under the name American Jeff. My name is Jeff. I think would start his Jeff's Barbershop series to create long form content for YouTube. This would grow into a massive platform bringing in some of internet's top talent alongside other members of the vlog squad and brand deals with Old Spice to name a few. He met David Dobrik in 2018. Jeff said he was hanging out with Todd when Dave arrived and they got pulled over by the cops. When David then found out Jeff was previously in jail he became very interested in Jeff. Ever since, he continued to appear in his vlogs more often, which also helped Jeff, Jeff's brand and his fame. When the pandemic hit, this put a stop to David's vlogs for some time. David restarted his vlogs. He restarted it with a stunt of his vlog squad members jumping out of a plane 25 times. Now, David decided not to participate in this. I don't know why, but he stayed home and he streamed video games on Twitch while his friends jumped out of a plane. 24 times. Group text. And David was sending in videos from this guy Devin Supertramp. And that was gonna be like the video to like come back and start posting again. There was a bunch of videos on YouTube. I never loved the idea of stunts, there's always a risk. You guys love the action. Jumping out of helicopters, slingshots, extremely dangerous stunts that stuntmen should be doing. The only thing different here was our crew was gonna be doing the stunts. One of the stunts that was in the video required to jump out of an airplane, so I texted in the group chat. Right away, I'm down, Jeff's down, and then a couple days later, Natalie commits. You know what I was most excited for? Because he was gonna give me the whole week off, so I was like, I don't have to do work, I don't have to listen to him for a whole week. And then I was like, you gotta jump 25 times to get your license. When I got the most comfortable, I was the least happy. I like the chaos, I like not knowing what I'm gonna be doing next week. This guy's got a fucking death wish. I brought one of my friends along that I knew he would push me through it. It just made me like nervous, like really like set in. Oh fuck, we're going right into this, huh? Why is there a plane crash right in front at the entrance? There's a sign. My life is finally going good. I finally got all my probation, felonies expunged off my record. I'm making money now. I got a good haircut. I'm finally liking my appearance. I'm not too good looking to be funny anymore. You know what I mean, Todd? I know it's hair condition. How's that not gonna take the parachute? Emergency contact. Jonah. Yeah, he's a trustworthy person. Here's the thing, David says, yo, I got a big comeback vlog coming, guys. I know I've been playing video games and doing nothing for the past three months and jerking off. When the fuck did we go from agreeing to one jump to 25 and then Natalie gets on? Oh yeah, I'll do it too. What's the big deal? Are you scared of your pussy? After conquering that challenge, David raised the stakes. He brought many of the members of the vlog squad to Utah and required an excavator spinning into round with members attached. Well, the first member we see in the video is Karina. And you can see that she was going so fast while David is operating the excavator, he's laughing. Now, Karina gets off and she says, you always take it too far, David. Next up was Jeff. Jeff held on while David swung him around, eventually crashing into the metal arm and injuring him badly. You could hear the noise of Jeff's head hitting off the metal frame. Jumped out of a plane 20 times. What's the worst that could happen if I swing from a rope over a one foot deep lake? And yeah, I didn't know I was gonna go that fast. So I grabbed the fucking rope and I tried to make a goddamn funny video for people. But this is where I made a mistake. I forgot that the biggest fucking idiot I know was driving it. Oh shit, oh shit. Jeff has had numerous surges on his eye to this date. He has brought out a four part series on his YouTube channel going into depth on his accident. At the start of this, he, he blamed David a lot. He became furious with David. He wanted him to feel the pain he felt, which is completely understandable. And David was in the wrong. A lot of his vlogs have now been taken down and are under scrutiny. And it seems that David just uses the vlog squad members 
for his own game and he doesn't think about them at all. As of today, Jeff has stated that his series, Jeff's Barbershop, is coming to an end and that he tore down the set of this. Now, he said this on Logan Paul's podcast, Impulsive, and you can see I'm not too sure myself, but it looks like he, he may be joking. But if anyone can let me know down in the comments what, what you think of it. I hope it doesn't as I really enjoyed these videos. Here's Jeff with a sledgehammer. That's it. That's the it's that's not, the barbershop? Well, it's ripped down. Yeah. That was the barbershop. Yeah, that was the barbershop. It had to get ripped down because Jonah wanted me out. He he was done. He and like like we said with the privacy thing, you know? We're getting trolled. No. We're getting we're getting trolled. I mean, how can I troll that? You think I'm you think I ripped that down? Wait, I've seen what you'll go through to fucking troll some you're fucking trolling us bro you figured yo you know what i've trolled these kids in the past it almost led us to hate each other it's and not fight gonna work. now we're gonna try i'm gonna troll them again we're so not that buying we can it buy, we can get what do you think i'm redesigning beef. you think i'm buying I'm this i'm putting new bricks up it's not even you <laughs> bro you think i'm gonna put new i'm sad because it all the nostalgia is gone <laughs> but i even... need a change i need a new show and that's jeff fm that that i'm gonna do jeff fm now <laughs> can you I'm be sick. honest for a second are you actually <laughs> bro, is the barbershop, I'm, I'm, is the barbershop <laughs> stopping I'm, Jeff, is the barbershop I'm, I'm, stopping? I'm sick of cutting hair during interviews. This yeah. was so nice being yeah. able to just talk to you guys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Having to do a haircut throughout the interview is tough. Yep. And I, I do love the, the barbershop show. It's something original that I, I somehow accidentally created. And Casey Neistat says it's dope, but this had to end here. I will try to figure something out. I'm working on other stuff. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to quit. What about Jonah? Me and Jonah? Yeah. I mean... Fuck him. <laughs> Let him eat himself to death. <laughs> yeah, really? Something true. happened? I mean, the, la the last time we were seen together on camera, I gave him a check for $10,000 for losing the most weight in a weight loss competition that I do a show to help people lose weight. Uh, yeah, 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 there's yeah. some fat shaming jokes yeah. in the show, but you know, at the end of the day, it's to help people, motivate them. He won, but he cheated. He did a, a, a boxer's weight cut. Oh, he did. He, he, did uh, he lost, like, just, it was just water weight. Yeah. He sat in the sauna. Yeah. He won uh. the money and then he ripped the check in half. He gave half of it away, made himself look good, and then told me to go fuck myself after. <laughs> he, I don't know. I, I swear. <laughs> on camera, he told me, I love you. And then afterwards, we talked and he said, Hey, look, like, I don't fuck I, with I just, you. I can't have all of your employees coming in my house anymore at random times in the night to shoot stuff. I need privacy and I need you to like, like, I don't care. I'll pay the whole rent. And I was like, you fuck me when I'm at rock bottom. This is what you do. You kick me when I'm down. Now I'm going to fuck, fuck you. you. I'm going to fuck you back. I'm going to go <laughs> impulsive and tell everybody how much of a fucking piece of shit you are. Jeff has started a new channel called Jeff FM and he has posted one video today thanks guys for clicking on the video and watching again i will link jeff's youtube channel below so you can check out the docuseries i think he would have brought out another episode by the time this video was released yeah if you like the video please subscribe comment and let me know what you think thank you have a great day